Good evening, Zero K fans! This is Shadow Theory TZ3 with some exhibition match replays for you today. I'm going to be starting off with a game between Randy and Lori, and if the name Randy sounds familiar, that's because apparently he's actually a professional, or was a professional StarCraft 2 player, and does poker now apparently. He's pretty well known from what I gather. I say that, I realize I say that I never really heard of him too much myself, but Yes, he is apparently a very well-known player, and he actually apparently came in because of the big one-day tournament. It's the one-day tournament that we had a couple weeks ago, there was a lot of people from Team Liquid who came and watched, apparently. And some of them stuck around. So we're going to be having some replays from them. Like I said, starting out between Randy and Lori on Intersection. So we shall begin. So this map is, as you can see, a particularly flat map. As We've seen it before, it's kind of flat very ramp oriented kind of urban and it's extremely conducive to vehicle play as you can see Randy is going very much for vehicles getting quick vehicles and very quick metal extractors as well going for quick dart and then a quick mason not too worried about getting raided while Lori is going for heavy tanks going for very quick welder before switching into Kodachi and Panther the very quick welder once again because raiding is less likely in this map though welders actually can defend themselves pretty well Especially against darts. Darts don't deal a whole lot of damage, so neither player is expecting the other to raid. Randy's a little bit concerned about possibly a blasting rush or any other air rush, so defender up. I mean, in general, having defender up like this, you kind of expect cheese, but just in case. Doesn't have to worry about that, though. Lori is not doing anything like that, although this map... I have been on the receiving end of a blasting rush, and it is annoying. I don't know if that's exactly what Randy expects, though, but... Definitely setting up his defenses just to be safe. And... Getting his power economy set up as well. Now, Randy does have a morphed E Cell Commander, only E Cell, not spending the money on an extra weapon, while Lori getting a weapon, the Light Particle Beam, rather new weapon that's considerably. that's considered quite powerful. I'm not sure exactly how powerful it is, but it is considered a powerful weapon. It's definitely a useful weapon. It seems to have kind of overtaken the popularity of the Beam Laser. Used to be, you'd always have Beam Laser E Cell, and it seems like Light Particle Beam is taken over that. Role, or at least partially, is the go to weapon for Commander Morphs. See, Randy continuing to build up more and more Masons. He is very much concerned about expanding quickly. He is playing it. I wouldn't say he's playing it close to the wire as far as construction goes because he knows that Lori is going heavy tanks and he knows that he can probably get away with basically doing whatever he wants. Lori also went for quick builder, so both players are focusing on economy. Neither of them are focusing very much on military, and thus neither are particularly worried about military. Instead, trying to build up their economy as quickly as possible. Though admittedly, Randy right now, he's building in parallel, but each of these works, you see the Masons are only using about 2 to 3 metal per second, rather than a full 5, which is what they can use, due to only having 4 metal extractors. Though, once he gets some overdrive going, that'll be nice. That'll be very helpful. And this Mason here is going down, helping, or, well, joining the commander, building more metal extractors. So Randy setting up his metal extractors. Lori actually has his metal extractor set up a little bit sooner. And it has his overdrive, a, well, she doesn't have his overdrive yet. He has much less power, but much more, well, a little bit more metal. Not by much, but just a little bit more. And Randy is now getting raided a bit. First, Kodachi hit him, but the Kodachi's going to go die to the Scorcher. Nice use of Scorcher there, and that is going to be very painful. Kodachis are extremely, or, well, extremely expensive, but for this stage of the game, they are extremely expensive. It's 180 metal, but you really don't want to lose them. When you're playing heavy tanks... You do not want to lose your vehicles. Now, against the light vehicles, it's not that big of a deal because, I mean, Scorchers are 130 metal themselves. But you don't want Kodachis to die. If you can at all avoid it, you want to fire, run away, and let it go. And Lori's starting to get attacked. The Welder having no problem getting into the dart, but the Panther able to help it out just in case. Another dart coming in from the south into, into Lori's base from Randy. And Randy not quite setting up a Scorcher too quickly. Set up around the middle of the map, just making sure he has an idea of what's going on. And sending Masons over to the northeast side of the map to build more metal extractors. So Randy is very quickly taking the east side of the map, while Lori, on the other hand, focusing still on the northwest. He hasn't started to take the southwest side of the map. But Randy is definitely going for the northeast side, getting some radar just in case. Right now, he does have quite a lot of vision. He's basically the entire center of the map from the east side of the map. He has full knowledge of what's going on there. While Lori is sending his commander over to the center, interesting choice. I, he's not sticking to it either, and the Panther is not able to do a whole lot. Randy has a nice little defense line set up from his slashers. This is pretty common, just having slashers set up. They work kind of like mobile defenders. 
So I'm not surprised that Randy has been building them, and he's continuing to build them, just focusing on them entirely while, on the other hand, Reapers are going to be coming in from Lori. He's not focusing heavily on an early raid game into Reapers, just going straight for Reapers, which is probably a good idea. They will be able to get through the Slashers, deal some damage, well, take quite a bit of damage, and then kill the Slashers as they get close. Now, I'm not sure how this is going to work, and by the way, this... Let's double-check the version of this, because there have been some changes to Panther recently. This is on the most recent version of the game. So, the Panther has been changed around... The biggest change is that when it dies, it EMPs everything around it. So, clumps of Panthers are nowhere near as useful as they used to be. And there's a couple other small range and damage changes, but the biggest change is EMP explosion on death, which we may see pretty soon if this laser gets lucky, and... No, Lori moving out of the way, getting the Panther... Out of the way, keeping it alive, but at the same time, Randy is sending some of his forces up north to deal with that panther and the welder. And those slashers are in a good position, getting some shots off on the reaper. One pan one slasher goes down, and the reaper, like I said, can take a lot of hits. Definitely a good choice here, though the Scorcher is trying to do what it can, and it is getting close up, and the closer it gets, the more damage it deals, and it's dealing quite a lot to that reaper, but it has gone down. The reaper has is about at one-third health left. Panther coming in to help out, but that Reaper did a pretty good job dealing with the Slashers, just breaking them up a bit. Not killing a whole lot of them, but still breaking them up. Keeping Randy just a little bit in check. Though even then, that Reaper is still at one-sixth health. It's going to go down if it's not careful fairly quickly. But it looks like Lori is being quite careful with it. He's avoiding too much exposure and getting it repaired very nice. So Lori got a few shots off basically for free. Managed to kill some of Randy's units. However, Randy does have a slight economic advantage. 22 metal to 19 metal. Both players are accessing energy, though. Randy is accessing it far more. He's actually overdriving as a result very slightly. It's not a huge amount, but it's still something. While well, Lori, on the other hand, not overdriving at all. And actually doesn't have a grid set up the way that Randy does. Because Randy has this backside of his entire grid, whereas Lori does not. And Lori continuing to set up, basically focus more on the map control aspect of getting metal, and Randy has already kind of done that. Like I said, he took over the northeast side of the map, Lori's starting to take over the southwest, but a rather risky position. His defender being overwhelmed by slashers, not a huge surprise. Their defenders, of course, only have three shots before they have to reload, while slashers have a limited number of shots. And another Reaper coming up from Lori, as his heavy tank factory continues to produce Panthers and Reapers. Randy, in response, is going straight for Scorchers. He wants to just go Scorcher diving all day long. Because that's what Scorchers do well, and that's what Scorchers do best. Dive in, deal a ton of damage, maybe die in the process, but... If you can dive in, you can kill anything. Heck, I'm pretty sure three Scorchers like this can kill a Commander diving in. But, the important thing is going to be the Reapers, not the Commander. The Commander, while important, is not the toughest target on the field right now. And, speaking of tough targets, Lori's Reaper is doing a pretty good job getting rid of... These defensive structures, but the defenders are dealing quite a bit of damage with the laser. It was, of course, the biggest threat, but even these defenders, I mean, it's two shots. One shot kills them, but one of the shots, as you can see, is wasted. However, that Reaper back down to a fifth of its total health, and the Scorch is coming in. Are they going to go for a dive? I th Well, of course they're going to go for a dive. It's right there. But the welders are in place to try to heal it up, and it looks like the Scorchers are moving back. Not bothering to try to take care of the Reaper just yet. Moving back instead to regroup a bit and going to the south instead. South center just to keep that consolidated. Randy really does have the east side of the map locked down tight. There is a bit of an opening if enough forces come into the east side of the map up here. This entrance is heavily defended. But I think two or three Reapers would be able to break it without too much issue. However, more importantly, Reaper coming in to the main base. Lori is setting up. A pretty powerful attack. Five Slashers are in place to defend, as well as the Laser and, def and Defender. But that Reaper is still going to have a lot of damage dealt before it gets knocked down, which probably will be never. Lori is being quite careful with his Reapers, making sure not to get them wasted. At the same time, he is moving some Panthers up to the north. Looks like he is setting up for a break, trying to get through these Laser Turrets. I'm... Hmm. I'm, I guess he doesn't really know what's going on. Let's see what he, what he does know. He does not know what is going on. His radar extends only as far as halfway into the east side of the map, and he does not know what is happening. So he doesn't know that there is actually a fairly easy path going up here. I mean, admittedly, it depends on where the units are currently positioned, but there is a path that has far fewer static defenses. And looks like the solution being taken is Black Dawn. It's not a bad idea. I was going to say Black Dawn or possibly 
a Phoenix or a Shadow or a bunch of Shadows to get rid of these laser turrets, and the Defenders is taken care of by Panthers, no problem. But Black Dawn's going to work as well. Their missiles will be able to just scour the Earth, tear apart all these defenses, and that would basically do it in. However, the important thing is really what's going on with these units. I mean, Randy is setting up a lot of static defenses, but he also has a lot of slasher set up, and his main base is under threat. That is a big thing to bear in mind. His main threat base right now is going to be taking a lot of damage because he doesn't have a whole lot in place to defend. His defenses are primarily in the center. He's going for a counterattack instead, trying to get rid of this Reaper and Welders with the Slashers. The Reaper moving up the hill. Looks like he's trying to avoid Slasher fire, make them have to fire through each other or through the ramp, which is not going to work, of course. But at the same time, Scorcher's going in, diving into the Reaper, and they will be able to tear it apart. There is nothing that Reaper can do to get out of there, or very little at least. It might be able to have enough health to get out of there, but no, not quite. It is down. One Reaper's gone down, the Panther's going down very quickly, and the Reaper over in the south has gone down as well. So, Lori being pushed back very heavily. Powerful Scorcher dive right there, and the Panther trying to do what he can to get rid of them, but the Scorchers have basically been built to counter Panthers, and there's that EMP burst right there. But yes, like I said, Scorchers have been built pretty much to counter Panthers, though admittedly the EMP explosion does somewhat undo it, but still, that Panther is dead, and the Scorcher basically made double cost as a result. I mean, Panthers are twice the cost of Scorchers. 300 metal versus 130 metal, that is pretty big, and Randy, after a job well done, raiding, getting rid of the mechs, getting rid of a Reaper, and a few Panthers, moving back and regrouping. Now his main base has been fairly well defended. He didn't have to worry too much about it. His static defenses were able to get rid of the Reaper, and it looks like Lori moved that Reaper all the way back here to get healed up by this caretaker in the southwest. So now Lori has taken the southwest. He's taken the west side, and Randy has taken the east side. So right now we have a pretty even split. Though Lori actually slightly ahead economically. It looks like he is doing some reclaim. Yes, he is getting some reclaim over in the north side of the map from that battle that was a bit more in Lori's territory than it was Randy. Randy actually just now getting the south mechs here, but he's also going for Lori's mechs. He's trying to raid this out, and Black Dawn moving in to deal with the slashers. They aren't in a great position to be dealt with in a group, and we only see one slasher go down. They are not clumped up well enough that it will be useful. I really was expecting he would go over here and try to just break open that, but I guess with the Reaper gone, that's no longer the best option. It looks like, at this point, Lori is going to try to do what he can with his Black Dawn, deal with these Slashers as best as he can, but that Black Dawn's taking a lot of damage trying to deal with the Slashers. Getting more of them up, I'm a little bit surprised he hasn't been focusing on... I'm I mean, I, guess, I suppose there are Banishers, that is one thing he could use against the Slashers, but even then they don't have a huge rate of fire. That's one thing about Heavy Tanks is that not a lot of them have a high rate of fire. So even though Reapers can basically one-shot, or well, with both shells one-shot a Slasher, they take about 10 seconds to fire each time. So that Slasher gets... Oh, okay, not 10 seconds. It feels like 10, but it's more like 3 or 4. And... Well, we can double-check. The reload time is 4 seconds exactly. And now the Black Dawn gets a good shot in, manages to take out one of the Slashers, and heavily damage a few others. But unfortunately... Even with that, it is taking a lot of damage. Able to take out more slashes. That is a very useful clump there for Lori. Randy had set himself up just enough with the slashers to be clumped out. Bit of a mistake on his part, but I doubt it'll cost him the game. In fact, at this point, Lori is having a very tough time getting harassed out once again. And Randy, I think he has... He either has reclaim or his overdrive has really just kicked in. And it looks like... Yes, his overdrive has in fact kicked in quite a lot, actually. He has a he has a three to two metal advantage right now, and that is pretty easily reflected in the units. In fact, he's actually still going entirely for light vehicles for slashers primarily. While Lori, on the other hand, keeping his black dons as best he can alive, he does have some tridents as well, just in case anti just in case air comes in. But it looks like right now the only black dons here are the ones we see on the screen, and where's the other one? The other one, repairing over to the southwest. Reaper's trying to chase off the slashers as best as they can. The one advantage the Reaper does have is it can fire while moving. The slashers, of course, cannot. The one unit in the game pretty much that can't. But the Reaper taking advantage of that, still, it does need to kill about five slashers before it starts to make cost. And with slashers in this many, this high numbers of slashers, it's very difficult for the Reaper to actually get a lot of shots in. Like I said, it is able to kill one of them at a time, but that's one every four seconds. 
while the slashes can fire nearly continuously. Now, see, at this point, more Reapers are being built. That's entirely what is being gone for. I'm a bit surprised, actually, no Tremors either. Although Tremors are quite expensive, so that's not entirely surprising. But, yeah, Banishers are about the same cost as Reapers. They have decent splash. Their main thing is going to be pushback, which, admittedly, not super useful, but it will cause the Slashers to have to redeploy. Small cost, but really... Between the Scorchers and the Slashers, Lori does not have a whole lot to, to counter this with. I think... Hmm. I think it's just a really interesting demonstration of how tank versus vehicle balance works in the new patch, because... Granted, we did see a lot of Scorchers and Slashers before this patch, but... Not as much in the way of a lot of Reapers. We used to see... It used to be a lot of Panthers. Panthers were the go-to unit, because you could clump them up, and then just EMP out everything, and nothing would work. Actually, there's some one-day tournament matches that revolved entirely around the use of Panthers. Right now, it's... Lori is going much more for Reapers, and I'm sure this is intentional. I'm sure he's he is meaning to go for Reapers. This is not something that he's doing by accident. It is, I'm sure, totally intentional. I don't fully agree with it, because it's not dealing with the large clumps of units very well. That apparently is what the Black Dons are for. And Cranes as well to help out with construction. I'm not sure where he's planning on building with those. Possibly sending some stuff down... Oh, Shield Lab also. Sending stuff down to the Shield Lab to help deal with this. And actually, if there's a Shield Lab, that means there are Roaches! That's exactly what I was expecting. Roaches set up around the south side of the map. Still, like I said, I'm not sure where Cranes can really build. They could probably repair around. And they can help out here, but the thing is the Welder... Much tougher than the Cranes. The Cranes' biggest asset is mobility. Possibly just being used for repairing stuff, but we'll see what it's up to. I'm just saying because the map is basically divided. Like I said, without actually taking more ground by offense, there's nothing that Lori can really do to build up. We are in, well into the mid-game. The map has been largely taken, and what is being taken has to be taken from the opposing player, which is, of course, rather difficult to actually do. We can see that is, of course, the core of the game is taking what your enemy has because we are all a bunch of kleptomaniacs. And the Black Dawn is going to be... Well, actually, got rid of a few of the Scorchers, but even then, the Scorchers are able to get around no problem, take out... Everything that's being built so far, take out the crane out of the sky, and take out all the metal extractors in Lori's base, compounding Randy's economic advantage. The Black Dawn really doesn't have enough... Neither the Black Dawn nor the Reaper have a high enough reload rate to deal with these Scorchers. And even a handful of them able to take out everything, everything that Lori has has been just been removed from his main base, except this one metal extractor and the factories. Now in the south, we do have not a whole lot more being built in terms of... Ro they're, they are being moved around a bit. But the Roaches are going to be entirely in the south side of the map. Not really set up for defense. I think he's just setting it up just in case Randy decides to assault the south side from the center south road. If he tries to assault from the western road, it will be pretty easy to get into. Now at this point, more welders being built, more Reapers being built. Lori sticking with Reapers. And Black Dons, on the other hand, have a possibly... Let's see if they have been destroyed. They have not been destroyed. There are, in fact, two Black Dawns. The one to the southwest remains in the southwest, and the one to the east is just coming down for repairs. Lori has basically conceded the entire northwest side of the map, and Randy does not seem to mind. He's quite happy with that. I'm sure he is. Of course you want your opponent to concede your stuff. And Randy, just to double check, he has currently almost 30 Slashers, and also about 13 Scorchers, but the Scorchers have been dying a lot more frequently. Yeah, this many Slashers is going to be hard to deal with without high alpha area of effect, which admittedly, Black Dawn does do well. As does Roach, somewhat, but I don't know about Reaper. Reaper, just the rate of fire. I mean, almost, I almost would say just just go for gold and get a Tremor. Like, Admittedly, now is too late. It's too late to get a Tremor now, but I'm just thinking, thinking beforehand, just having a Tremor just to deal with this, just to tear apart all these Slashers, my goodness, it looks like a bunch of ants coming into the base. Just driving in on their tiny wheeled legs. And these slashers will just tear... I mean, the Scorchers are going to tear apart most of this stuff. The slashers are just there as fire support. The scorchers taking out this factory. The factory is down. Their heavy tank factory, rather, is down. But so are most of the Scorchers. And the slashers is going to take care of the gunship plant and the welder. The shieldbot factory in the south. The only thing that Lori has going for him right now is the, sh as the gunship plant. Just about to go down. And... Counterattack happening with the Reapers. The Reapers trying to do what they can, but the Scorchers are just going to dive in. 
big Scorcher Dive for the win for Randy right now. Or at least it would be for the fact that Black Dawns, like I said, are really useful anti-group weapons. And the Reapers have enough health to get out of that successfully. That Scorcher Dive did not work. Not entirely surprisingly given that Reapers really are quite tough, but still. That Black Dawn turned it around. That was the reason. I'm a little surprised the Roaches weren't involved, but yes, that was the reason that battle turned in Lori's favor, was that Black Dawn. However, it's going to need to get rid of these Slashers because they are, they are coming in from the north and... These roaches are going to be a bit of a problem. That's actually... That's about... The only hope that Lori has right now is these roaches. I believe they are far enough away from each other. They will not splash each other out. They will not kill each other. But the slashers will... As soon as one of them runs into it, they are coming in one at a time. Normally this is a bad thing, but when you consider the situation, it's actually good. And the Black Dawn's coming in, trying to get knocked out of this guy by stingers, but not quite able to do so. Anyway, one at a time is good in this case because the roaches will are blowing things up as a group. However, they are actually clumping up before the roaches get to them, and the roaches able to get rid of- Holy crap, that was a roach kill! That was- Okay, remember, we had about 30, now we're down to 9. That cut that down to a third of its former numbers. Admittedly, not quite enough, but still, and heavily damaged the rest. Not quite enough to deal with the entire group, but still a lot of damage dealt by the roaches. That was a wonderful roach usage there. The last roach didn't quite manage to pull it off, but not entirely surprising. Still, huge amount of damage. That being said, there still needs to be something to get rid of the rest of the slashers. They are in a great position to get rid of this felon. This felon has no energy now. The shield energy powers its weapon. The Black Dawn coming back to try to deal with this, and Randy at the same time switching over to Ravagers. His slashers have done their job. They got rid of the shield bot factory. The Reapers and Black Dawn trying to get rid of what they can, but at this point, Lori has nothing to do but throw in the towel. Very nice Roach explosion there, but kind of late, unfortunately. Still, well done there. Very good game from both players. I'm going to move on to another game. It's going to be another replay involving Randy. Randy and Google Frog this time around. So stay tuned. <laughs> 